All right, so let's consider the given beam and we are asked to do the shear force and bending moment analysis for this given beam. Okay, so we have this beam carrying a hinge support and the load applied on this hinge is simply 10 kN. We also have the beam carrying a uniformly distributed load between B to C and of course this hinge also carries an inclined load of 5 kN at point E. And we are asked to do the shuffles and bending moment analysis. It's a very simple um, technique. Alright, so the first thing to do, of course, is outline the free body diagram. So you pull down the beam. You pull down the beam. As A, you know that we have two reactions for a pin support. As A is a pin support. So for a pin support, you simply have two reactions. One is vertical. So we'll call this simply R-A-Y and the other is horizontal reaction called is simply RAX all as points A. Now between B and C we have a UDL. Between B and C we have a UDL. Of course we have to convert the UDL to a point load. To convert a UDL to a point load you simply multiply the UDL load by the length covered. The length covered by this UDL now is simply what? 2 meters. The UDL load itself is 15 kilonewtons per meter. So we simply have 15 times 2, that gives us 30 kN. It becomes the point load of the UDL. Where do you place the point load now? At the middle. The middle of 2 meters is what? 1, which is simply 2 divided by 2. So which means this point load acts at the middle and the value is 30 kN. So distance from point A to the point load is 1, from B to the point load is 1 meters, and from the point load to C is also 1 meters. Next. Uh, we have at point D, we have a hinge support. For a hinge support, we always have two reactions. First of all, the hinge itself or the force applied on the hinge is just like you trying to open up your knob. This hinge is actually the door, the knob of every door or what you call your doorknob. If you want to open up your doorknob, you apply your hand on it and then you turn. Now, applying your hand on it is simply what? Applying a load on it. And in this case, this load is given as what? 10 kN. That load is felt at the hinge at point D. So at this point D, we have this load of 10 kN being felt here. That's the first reaction there at point D. We have 10 kN felt at point D. The second reaction is after you apply that load, what happens? You turn on your doorknob, you make what a clockwise moment or a couple. Once you turn on the doorknob, there's a moment made about a certain direction and that helps to open up your door so you have a clockwise moment and moment normally we know is simply what force times distance covered the distance covered by this force to get to point d is simply what two meters given on the diagram as two meters so it means the moment of this force or the couple of this force above point d will simply becomes two times ten which is twenty so at point d we also have a couple known as twenty kilo newtons meter okay now at point e not forgetting at point e we have a force that is inclined at point e so let's do the analysis here we have this force inclined at point e call this the um the beam the angle of this of inclination of this force horizontal is simply 30 um, degrees and the value of the force itself is 5 kilo newtons so see this force is inclined which means we have to resolve this force in both words force y as this and X axis. Okay. So let's trace an imaginary line here. Of course, this becomes my Y direction and this becomes my X direction. So if here is 30, that means this angle here should be what? 60 degrees. Now, resolving this force to the horizontal, you hold the arrow of the force or the tip of the force, pull the force to meet the horizontal line. Observe the direction of this arrow now. Where will this arrow point? To the left. So this arrow points to the left. So you have this force pointing to the left. And this force passes through this angle, 30 degrees. So what do you do? You simply multiply the force by what? Cosine of the angle it passes through. Always to convert any force to any direction or any axis, you always convert, multiply by cosine of the angle which the force makes with that particular axis. So I want to resolve to the x. If I pull this force to meet the x, this force passes through this angle, 30 degrees. I will simply have this force to be 5 times cos. 30, please. What is 5 cos 30? What is 5 cos 30? 
you have 4.5, call that 4.5 kilo newtons. Same thing, resolving this force vertically, you hold the tip of the arrow of the force, pull the force to meet the vertical line, observe the direction of this arrow now, this force points downwards. And in this case now, it passes through this angle 60 degrees. So you simply multiply the force by cosine of the angle it passes through. You simply have here to be 5 cos 60. And this is simply what? 2.5 kilo newtons. So we have two reactions for this force. One is vertically downward force pointing downwards at point A. 2.5 kilo newtons. How can it be 2? It can't be 2.9. 5 cos 60. Re re refresh your calculator. And then we have a horizontal force also at that point. The value of this force is simply 4.5 kilo newtons at point A. There is no negative sign. You are using directions. Is when you start solving, you put in the direction of the force. Yes. Okay, so at point F, we have a ruler support. And for a ruler support, we just have one reaction normal to the surface. So you simply have, um, okay, one reaction normal to the surface. Call this arrow F, Y, to so this point F. Distance apart, we have here to be 2 meters. We have from C to D as 1 meter. So here is simply uh, 1 meter from C to point D. Now take note, from D to E is simply 2 plus 1, which is 3 meters. From D to E now, it becomes 2 plus 1, that's 3 meters. So we'll have this distance to be 3 meters. And from E to F remains 2 meters. So this becomes the free body diagram of this system. That's the first thing to do, outline the free body diagram. After obtaining this, you now employ all your equilibrium laws. Okay, you now employ all equilibrium laws after obtaining the free body diagram. The first equilibrium law, summation of horizontal force, summation f of x is equal to zero. We consider force that points to the right to be positive and force that points to the left to be negative. And if we check on this beam, there are only two forces pointing in the x axis here. The first is arrow ax pointing to the right, right. So it's positive. We pick it out. R a x the next is 4.5 kilo newtons pointing to the left so it's negative you pick it out minus 4.5 and this is equal to zero so we'll simply send minus 4.5 over to this side of the equation negative sign cross and equal to sign becomes what positive this implies that r a x is actually 4.5 kilo newtons so that's off you guys know all this part now. Okay. Next equilibrium law, summation of vertical force, summation f of y is equal to zero. We consider vertically upward force to be positive, downward force to be negative. So we have R A Y pointing upwards, positive, you pick it out, R A Y. We have 30 kN force pointing downward, so it's negative. That's minus 30. Next, you have 10 kN force acting downward, so it's negative. Minus 10. Next, you have 2.5 kN force acting downwards. Minus 2.5. Finally, you have ROFY pointing upward, so it's positive. Plus ROFY. And the whole of this is equal to zero. So we evaluate now RAY minus 30 minus 10 is minus 40, minus 2.5 is minus 42.5, minus 42.5 plus RFY, and this is equal to zero. So we simply send minus 42.5 over this side of the equation. Negative sign cross and equal to sign becomes positive. Therefore, you have RAY plus RFY to be equal to 42.5. Call this equation 1.5. Now, 
we have two unknowns in one equation which makes it very impossible for us to solve so we simply take what moment and i always say take moment about the point where we have what numerous of force and if you assess this beam we have about two unknowns at point a is that not so so we simply take moment about point a so take moment of forces about point a take moment about a summation of moment about point a is simply equal to zero let's consider clockwise moment to be positive anti-clockwise to be negative so we take moment about point a the two forces at point a r a y and r a s cannot take moment at this point because from equilibrium law moment of force at a point is completely what zero and there is no distance between these two forces about point A. Next, we take moment of the 30 kN force about point A. This force is acting downwards, which means this force will turn about in this direction to take moment at point A. It turns in this direction, which is simply what? Clockwise. Is it clockwise? Yes, that's clockwise and it's positive. Total distance to take this force to get to point A is simply 1 plus 2, which is 3 meters. So you simply have 30 times. 3. Next is the 10 kN force acting downwards as well. This force will also turn about in this direction to point A. So which means it also have a clockwise moment. It turns in this direction to point A. Total distance it takes this force to get to point A is simply 1 plus 2, 3 plus 2, that's 5. Total distance is 5 meters. Okay. So you simply have plus 10 times 5. Next, we have the 2.5 kN force acting at point E. This force is also acting downward, which means it will turn about in this direction to point A. That's clockwise. So it's positive. And total distance it takes this force to get to point A is simply what? 8 meters. 3 plus 1 is 4 plus 2 is 6 plus 2 is 8. So we simply have plus 2.5 times 8. Now, notice that we have also a 4.5 kN horizontal force at point E. And I've always said that if a force lies on the same plane as the plane of moment, the moment of that force becomes what? Zero. Because force, moment is actually distance, um, the distance which um, is perpendicular to the line of action of the force. So that distance and line of action of the force must be at 90 degrees and not parallel. This force is purely parallel towards the plane. So therefore, the moment of this 4.5 kN force above point it becomes zero. So finally, we consider this force ROFY. This force is pointing upwards, which means it will turn about in this direction, take moment at point A. And therefore, that direction is simply anti-clockwise, which is negative. Total distance it takes this force to get to point A is simply four, um, 10. 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 1 is 6, plus 2 here is 8, plus 2 is 10. Therefore, you have minus ROFY times 10. But take note, on the beam, we already have a moment or a couple due to this hinge support. On the beam, we already have a couple due to this hinge support. And the value of this couple is what? 20 kN meter. We already have a moment on the beam. And this moment is also what? Clockwise. Is that also? It's clockwise. So you simply add that to that equation. You add it. So we simply add that moment plus 20. And this is equal to 0. So we now evaluate 30 times 3 gives us 90 plus 10 times 5 gives us 50 plus 2.5 times 8 gives us 20 plus okay minus 10 r e y 10 r f y thank you 10 r f y plus 20 and that's equal to zero. So let's evaluate now. 90 plus 50 is 140, plus 20 is 160, plus 20 again is 180. So you have 180 minus 10 R F F Y, and this is equal to zero. So we simply send, simply send minus 10 R F Y over here. Negative sign cross and equal to sign becomes positive. So we are simply going to have 180 
will be equal to 10 r f y and therefore we make uh, we make r f y subject is equal to 180 all over 10 which implies that r f y is actually 18 kilonewtons and if you know r f y simply substitute into equation one into equation one from equation one over there we have r a y plus r f y and r f y now is 18 so simply plus 18 and that's equal to 42.5 so we simply send plus 18 over here to make r a y subject therefore r a y becomes 42.5 minus of course positive sign cross and equal to sign becomes negative so minus 18 please give me the value of r a y this implies that r a y is 24.5 kilo newton so these are the two reactions so please take note because of this couple on the beam due to this hinge when you're done with the moment equation you add the couple you add it you add it okay and the reason why it is clockwise is because of the direction of the, of the hinge of this um, arm since the arm is pointing here it means this will have a turning effect about these points that's why you have this couple like this so it means that if this arm is pointing here that means the couple will be what anti-clockwise is that okay it will be anti-clockwise so you add that all right so having done this now Having found the reactions, you now put them back into the original beam. But in this case now, there is no special diagram for um, a hinge support. There is no special diagram for a hinge support, so it remains like this. The only thing that is special in this diagram now is just what the uniformly distributed load. That's all. There is no special diagram for the hinge support. So you put it back into the original beam that contains the UDL, but this, we are going to use the free body diagram for the hinge support. Um, when inputting this value. So let's get down the beam now. Okay, so we have this. We know RA now. RAY gave us 24.5 kilonewtons. Between B and C, we have a UDL. You put back the UDL between B and C. You have a UDL. Okay. Yes. For yes, there's a value for RAX now. Yes, yes, there is. We have RAX2 at point A. The value is 4.7, 4.5 kilonewtons. We have value for RAX. This is simply RAX, 4.5 kilonewtons. Okay, between C, this is point C, and this is point D. Now, at point D, we have a couple and a point load. The point load there at point D is simply 10, right? 10 kilonewtons. And we have a couple at point D of 20 kilonewtons meter. You also indicate that. And at point E, we have a 5, kilo, a 5 kilonewtons force there. Sorry, 2.5 kilonewtons force at point E. This is point E. We have 2.5 kilonewtons force. And we have a horizontal force at that point as well, 4.5 kilonewtons. And finally, at point F, we have a vertical reaction. This is point F. So we have RFY, which gave us 18 kilonewtons. Distances apart, this is 2 meters. This is 2 meters. CD is 1 meter. Here is 2 meters. And yes, what was funny you is the UDL load is 15 kilonewtons per meter, not forgetting. So UDL load remains 15 kilonewtons per meter. So we can now start the shear force analysis. What? Oh yes, D to E is 3 meters. D to E is 3 meters. Yes, correct, it's 3 meters. D to E is 3 meters. 
So we can now start the shear force analysis. So we can now start the shear force analysis. This is point A. And I said shear force simply means the stepwise summation of the entire force acting on the beam from beginning of the beam to the end of the beam. We consider upward force to have positive shear force and downward force to have negative shear force. Now, in this case, remember, we have a horizontal reactions at A and at D. Two of them are already in equilibrium. The two reactions are equal. ROAX and R and the reaction, horizontal reaction at point D is the same thing. They have the same values, 4.5 and 4.5 in opposite direction. So that side is balanced. So we only consider what the upward forces in this case now for the surface analysis. Now, at A, shear force at A simply means the force that exists directly at point A. So we are only considering the vertical force and not the horizontal force. Therefore, shear force at point A is simply equal to the force here is pointing upwards, so it is positive. You have 24.5 kilo newtons. So this same force moves from point A down to point B. Since there is no force at B, it simply becomes Shear force at point B is also what 24.5 kilo newtons. This same force moves from point A down to point B, so shear force at B remains with 4.5 kilo newtons. But between B to C, there is what a UDL. Because of this UDL, what do we do? We take what a section. So you consider a section XX at a distance of X. Now, your distance runs from point A to the point of section. So, section the, a portion of the UDL, call this XX. Distance from point A to this section portion should be called what? X. That's the rule. Okay, at a point, consider a section XX. Of course, you have to put this down in your book if this was to be an exam condition. You put it down. Consider a section XX at a distance X from A along bc so it becomes now shear force bc along bc so it becomes shear force bc now to obtain the distance from b to the point of course we need to find what is now the length of the udl about the point of section if from point a to the point of section is x meters we only need from point b length of udl about the point of section from point b to the point of section what would that distance become x minus 2. So simply, since we're moving from point B, it means we don't need every other distance behind. Since 2 meters are behind, take away 2 meters from x. It means this distance is simply x minus 2. So the length of the UDL about the point of section is simply x minus 2. Okay, so we'll find the shear force. Now remember, it was this same shear force, 24.5 kN force that moved from point B, now encountered a UDL. So you bring down this 24.5, 24.5 kN force. It now encounters this UDL. UDL loads are always what? Negative because they act downward. So you put down your minus sign. Now the length of the UDL about the point of section is what? X minus 2. But we want to find what? Shear force. How do we then convert a UDL to a point load? Multiply by length cover, right? Now what is the length now? X minus 2. Therefore this UDL becomes what? 15 times x minus 2. This becomes the point load and that's the shear force for the UDL along this. Line. That becomes the point load. Now, this is called the shear force equation. That's called the shear force equation and of course, um, I think this is where we'll have a point of maximum bending moment. I don't know. When we'll solve, we'll see. But this is called the shear force equation. Now, having known this now, we can now find shear force as C. The intention was just to form this equation then after B, we have to find the shear force at C. So at point C, if X now moves from point A and extends down to point C, what becomes the value of X? X becomes 4. Total distance from A down to C, which is 2 plus 2, 4 meters. So at C, X is equal to 4 meters. So wherever you see X in this shear force equation, you simply put in the value as 4. And this now no longer becomes shear force BC. It now becomes shear force at point C. Okay. So we simply have shear force C is now equal to 24.5 minus 15 
into x is 4 it becomes 4 minus 2 okay this is now 24.5 minus 15 into 4 minus 2 is 2 this is 24.5 minus 30 so 24.5 minus 30 therefore share force at c is simply equal to 24.5 minus 30 5.5 minus 5.5 kilo newton so that gives us the shear force at point c now this same force moves from point c down to point d but at point d remember we have a downward force of 10 kilo newtons for that reason we simply say shear force d prime which means initially at point d this same force moves from point c down to point d so it still remains minus 5.5 kilo newtons but now finally at point d which is shear force d prime prime this force minus 5.5 kilo newtons now encountered a downward force of 10 kilo newtons downward so therefore we simply have minus 10 and this is simply equal to minus 15.5 kilo newtons so shear force d prime prime is simply minus 15.5 Next, this same force moves from point D down to point E, but at point E we recognize also that there is a downward force of 2.5 kilo newtons. So we simply say shear force E prime, which means initially at point E, this same force moves. So we have minus 15.5 kilo newtons moving down to point E initially, but finally at point E we have a 2.5 kilo newtons force acting downwards. Therefore we simply say shear force e prime prime which means finally at point e this same force minus 15.5 encounters a downward force of 2.5 kN. so downwards it becomes minus 2.5 and this is equal to minus 18 kilo newtons so you keep this aside now this force moves from point e down to point f but at point f recognize we have an upward force so we simply say shear force f prime which means initially shear force f prime initially at point f this same force moves we still have minus 18 kilo newtons but on getting to point f this force now encounters an upward force of 80 kilo newtons so we simply say shear force f prime prime which is finally at point f this same force minus 18 kilo newtons encountered an upward force plus 18 and this value simply gives us zero at the end of every surface analysis you must always obtain zero as the answer so we have that so that is that for the surface analysis next move to the bending moment analysis okay so let's start the bending moment analysis now bending moment analysis From equilibrium law, the moment of force about every point is what? Zero. From equilibrium law, the moment of force about, about every point is zero. So the moment of the forces at point A, both this and this, moment of every force at point A, since there is no force behind A, the moment of all the force at point A becomes zero. So bending moment at A, or simply moment at A, equals zero. So we move next to point B. We move next to point B and find the moment at point B. At point B, of course, there is no force at point B, but even if there is a force at point B, the moment of any force about that point becomes also what? Zero. But behind B, we have forces. We have 24.5 kN force at point A, which can take moment about point B. Now, when taking moment as well, you also consider upward force to have positive moment and downward force to have negative moment. You also consider that. Okay? So at point B, we have a 24.5 kN force behind, which can take moment about point B. And distance it takes this force to get to point B is simply 2 meters. Since this force is upward, it means it will exert a positive moment. Therefore, moment at B is simply 24.5 times 2. And that should be 50, no, 49. We have 49 kilonewtons meter now 
on getting to B between B to C, there is a UDL. And I always say, if you're doing bending moment analysis, immediately you enter the terrain of the UDL, what do you do? You continue taking section towards the end of the beam. Yes. If you're doing bending moment analysis, it's different from Schaffer's analysis. In Schaffer's analysis, once you pass the UDL, you're gone, you're done. But in bending moment analysis, once you enter the terrain of the UDL, you continue taking section to the end of the beam. Else, you can never get your um, diagrams accurate or your values accurate either. Not forgetting, at the end of every bending moment analysis, you must always obtain what? Zero. So if you don't do this section, there is no way you can get zero, unless you want to manipulate. And that means you're not getting it accurately. Yes. Any question? Okay. I saw you raising your hands now. Okay, so um, because of this UDL, we now consider a section. Consider a section XX at a distance X from point A along BC. So we've already done this section before. From A to this section, point of section, we simply call that distance X. And all we need to find is what? The length of the UDL. So for, which is from point B to the point of section. Length of UDL about the point of section. Simply from point B. And we we'll obtain that previously as X minus 2. Okay. So um, this is now moment along BC. So you simply take the moment of all the force behind down to the point of section. We have 24.5 kN force behind. This force can take moment about the point of section. Not forgetting, distance from this force to the point of section is simply what? X. So it means the moment of this force about the point of section becomes 24.5 times x. So we'll have that 24.5 x times x. Then again, we now take the moment of the UDL about the point of section. We now know the length of the UDL about the point of section as x minus 2. What then is the moment? First of all, what do we do? We convert this UDL to a point load because moment is simply force times distance. For instance, let me explain that here. I have my beam and I have this UDL about the point of section and the value of this UDL remain 15 kilonewtons per meter. This is the point of section XX and distance from point B to the point of section will obtain the distance of the UDL to be what? X minus 2. So this is the length of the UDL about the point of section. Now I want to convert this first of all to a point load before taking moments. Okay, between point B and C, this is B. And this is point C. To convert this UDL to a point, what do I do? I will simply multiply the UDL load towards the length cover, right? It becomes 15 times x minus 2. This becomes the point load. But that's not the moment. After converting this, why do I place it now? At the middle, right? Remember, this is the section point xx. So from B to the section point is x minus 2. Middle becomes here. So the middle simply becomes from here to this point, which is what? x minus 2 all over 2. Is that not so? Then distance from here again to the point of section remains x minus 2 all over 2. So which means this point load now 15 times x minus 2. The moment of this point load about the point of section becomes 15 times x minus 2 times total distance it takes this point load to get to the point of section and that distance is what? x minus 2 all over 2. Is that not so? Okay, so it means now that the moment becomes minus 15 times x minus 2, this is the point load, then multiply by x minus 2 all over 2. That becomes the moment of that force about the point of the section. Okay, so this becomes the total moment about the point of section. Of course, at um, C, or finally get to point C, x becomes total length from point A to C, which is simply what? 4 meters. At C, X becomes 4. So this becomes moment at C. And that's equal to wherever you see X, put in the value as 4. It becomes 24.5 times 4 minus, this is 15, into 4 minus 2, into 4 minus 2 all over 2. And this is equal to 24.5 times 4. 98 okay minus this becomes 15 
into 4 minus 2 is 2 into 4 minus 2 all over 2 that becomes 2 all over 2 so moment at c is now equal to 98 okay minus of course 2 over 2 is 1 15 times 2 is 30 it becomes minus 30 which equals minus 58 68 kilonewton meter so this is the moment at point c oh sorry it becomes So this becomes 98 minus 30, that's 50, 68, 68 kilonewtons meter. So you have this. That becomes the moment at point C. Okay, next is to find the moment at point D. So like I said, since we have entered the terrain of the UDL, we continue taking section for moments till the end of the beam. To, take, to find the moment at point C, due to this UDL, you also consider another section along cd you consider a section xx at a distance of x from point a along cd so now from point a to this point of section now distance c remains x meters all we need to do now is what is the length of the udl remember udl is from point b to point c this is where the udl is what is now the length of the UDL? If we are considering a section from point A along CD, what is now the length of the UDL? Simply, total length from point A to point D is what? 5. 2 plus 2 plus 1 is 5. You know that eventually X will extend to where? Point D. Is that not so? And, and if X extends to point D, it makes the length as what? It means X becomes equal to what? 5. Total distance from point A down to point D. But the length of the UDL itself is what? 2, right? Now, here is the shortcut. I think I've called that before. Here is the shortcut. If X extends, okay, we'll have X, and we know that eventually X will be equal to 5. Is that not so? What then do we do to 5 to obtain the length of the UDL? UDL length is 2 meters. What do you do to 5 to obtain 2 meters? Okay. It becomes 5 minus 3. Is that not so? If you remove 3 from 5, you definitely obtain what? 2 meters with the length of the UDL. But remember that we are now saying that let 5 be what? X. So it means that the length of the UDL now becomes X minus 3. Is that okay? The length of the UDL becomes X minus 3. That's the first method. The second method is this. Since I want only this portion, which is B to C, that's all I'm looking for. I'm not looking for 2. I'm not looking for this one. And from A to this point is X. Simply remove these two and one that I'm not looking for from X. 2 plus 1 will give me what? 3. Remove that from X. You still have X minus 3. So the length of the UDL becomes X minus 3. Which is this. And if you have this with the length of the UDL, first of all, we take moment of this force, arrow AY, about the point of section. This one is constant. From point A to the point of section is X. So the moment of this force about the point of section becomes 24.5 times x. Okay, so let's get down the moment. Now this becomes moment along C D, and that's equal to moment of the first one becomes 24.5 times x. The next force we have here is the UDL load. We now know the UDL length, which is x minus 3. Um, okay, so let me explain something now in this case. Let me explain something here. So we have this beam from point A. This is point B. This is point C. And this is along the section CD. This is point D. And we are simply saying from A to this point of section, this is point A, is X meters, right? And we've obtained distance from point B to the point of section due to this section from B to C is simply what? X minus 3, which is the length of the UDL. Remember, this is the UDL, okay? That's the length of the UDL. And the value of the UDL remains 15 kilonewtons per meter. So if the length of the UDL is X minus 3, I want to convert this UDL to point load. Length is X minus 3. I want to convert this UDL to point load. What do I do? Multiply the UDL load by what? The length cover, right? 
So it becomes 15 times x minus 3. This becomes the point load. Where do you now place this point load? At the middle, right? So which means this point load will act at the middle and this is simply 15 times x minus 3 acting at the middle. And middle now simply becomes from b to this point load becomes x minus 3 all over 2, right? And again from here to point c becomes x minus 3 all over 2. You have this. Now, but we want to take moment about point D. Not forget it. The intention is to take moment about point D, right? So if here is x minus 3 over 2, what then? The moment is simply what? Total distance it takes this force to get to where? The point of section or simply to get to point D. So 15 times x minus 3 multiply the x minus 3 all over 2. But x minus 3 all over 2 is not the total distance because this is the point of point of section and distance from point A to point D is simply what? 1 meters, not forgetting. So all you need to do is simply 15 times x minus 3 is the point load times the total distance it takes this load to get to the point of section or point D. Since we are taking moment at point D, it becomes x minus 3 all over 2, which is this, plus distance from point C to point D, which is 1. You have this. Is that okay? Okay. So you do the same thing here now. Therefore, this moment becomes minus 15 times x minus 3. Okay, times total distance is x minus 3 all over 2 plus 1. You add that distance. That becomes moment at point D. That becomes moment at point D. Okay. Now, at D, Obviously, x becomes total length from point A to point D, which is simply 2 plus 2 plus 1, 5. At D, x is equal to 5 meters. Okay? So, wherever you see x, simply put in the value of D, then it becomes moment at point D. And it is now equal to 24.5 times D is 5 minus 15 times D is also 5. So, it becomes 5 minus 3. Okay, into, you have here 5 minus 3 all over 2 plus 1. So this is equal to 24.5 times 5. 1 what? 1, 3, 2. 1, 8, 8 2. Okay, 1, 2, 2. Point 5. Okay. Minus, you have here 15 into 5 minus 3 is 2. Into 5 minus 3 is 2 all over 2 plus 1. You have 2 all over 2 plus 1. So, this is equal to 122.5. Okay, minus 15. Okay. That's 30, of course, 15 times 2 is 30, into 2, all, 2 over 2 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, so 30 times 2. This is now 122.5 minus 30 times 2 gives us 60, and you have that value to be what? That's moment at D. 122.5 minus 60. What? 62.5 kilonewtons meter. So it becomes a moment at point D. Moment at A is actually 16 kilonewtons meter. So we have this. I will need shear force A. I will need shear force B. Please ask. X minus 5. I said the distance since we are taking section from point A to the point of section here. And we say distance from point A to this point of section remains X meters. What is now distance of this force at point D to the point of section? Simply take away distances behind. We want from D to the point of section. Yeah. I will need these shear force values. I will need them. 
Okay, I don't have any option. There is no other place to wipe. Yeah? Ask. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Five minus three is two. Two times five, fifteen is what? Which is this? Five minus three is two divided by two is one. One plus one is two. Which is this? Look at it now. Five minus three is two. Two times fifteen is thirty. Two over two years one. One plus one is two. Which is this? It's correct. Okay. So I am going to wipe this portion off now. So you're going to just save this share force values because we are going to come back to it when plotting the diagrams. So you just screenshot or save this share force values because I'm going to wipe it out to create space for myself on the board. That's what I will do. So please, guys, you will keep these values for me. Share force at A and share force at B. Very necessary. You keep these values for me. Share force at A and share force at B. Both of them are the same, 24.5 anyways. Okay, so next is to take moment at point E. Now, like I said, since we've entered the terrain of the UDL, we'll continue taking sections to the end of the beam. So along DE now, you consider another section, consider section XX along DE. Let the distance from point A to the point of section B, X meters. The aim of this is also to be able to find the value of what or the length of the UDL itself. So to do this, following each any of the approach I've taught you, I only want BC. I don't want these two meters. I don't want these one meters. I don't want these three meters. Three plus one is what? Four. Four plus two is what? Six. Therefore, remove six from X. That gives for the length of UDL, which is X minus six. That's the first approach. Or simply, eventually, you know that X will extend down to what? Point E. And if you extend, it means X becomes total length from point A down to point E which is 2 plus 2, 4, 5, and 8. So what do you remove from 8 to obtain the length of UDL, which is 2? Remove 6. 8 minus 6 will give us 2. So it means x minus 6. That's the alternate way. Okay. So first of all, this becomes moment along DE. And this is equal to, this is constant. The moment of this force about DE still remains. This force and total distance it takes for to get to point E which is simply what x in this case. So you have 24.5 times x. This one is constant. Now, first of all, we convert this UDL to a point load. It becomes minus 15 times x minus 3, right? So x minus 6. Okay, then you multiply by x minus 6 all over 2 plus total distance it takes now from point C down to point E, which is what? 1 plus 3. Is that not so? And that's 4. So simply plus 4. You have this. Then we have this force. Now take note. If from point A to the point of section is x meters, what is now distance from point D to the point of section? Distance of this force at point D. It becomes x minus total distance behind. We don't need 1, 2, and 2, which is 5 meters. So remove Five from x that is what distance from point D to the point of section, which is distance of this force about the point of section. That is simply x minus five. So the moment of this force about the point of section becomes ten times x minus five. Okay, minus ten minus because it's pointing downward times x minus five. Okay, I think that's all. Eventually, of course, at point E x is now equal to total length from point A down to point E, which is simply what? 2 plus 2, 4, 5 plus 3 is 8. So x equals 8. So wherever you see x putting the value as 8, this moment becomes moment as E, and this is equal to, you have 24.5 times x, x is what? 8. Okay, minus 15 
times x is also 8 minus 6 into you have your x minus 6 becomes 8 minus 6 all over 2 plus 4 minus 10 into 8 minus 5 you have this and this is equal to 24.5 times 8 196 196 minus 15 into 8 minus 6 is 2 into 8 minus 6 remains 2 all over 2 plus 1 plus 4 okay minus 10 into 8 minus 5 is 3 you have this so this is equal to 196 minus 15 times 2 is 30 okay so you have 30 times 2 over 2 here is 1 plus 4 is 5 2 over 2 is 1 plus 4 that's 5 minus 10 times 3 is 30 okay so moment at e is now equal to 196 minus 30 times 5 is 150 minus 30 please give me this value so we are the last card now we are at the last card simply at f we now find a moment at f so to do that as well like i said since you enter the tailing of udl you continue taking section to the end of the beam so let's now consider a section xx consider a section xx at a distance x from point a so from point a to the point of section now remains x meters from point a to the point of section now section is now along ef so this moment becomes moment about ef and that's equal to so if we're taking this section we now need to find the length of the udl from point b down to point c what's now the length of the udl so applying the shortcut um since i'm getting to point e and i know eventually i'll get to point f it means that's now the total length of the entire beam and we need only the length two meters so the length of the udl so you get the length of the entire beam two plus two is four plus one is five plus three is eight plus two is ten so the length of the entire beam is simply ten but we need what only two meters from ten that means we're going to subtract four from ten eight from ten to get two ten minus eight gives us two and remember x is the distance running down to point 10 so it means that the length of video becomes x minus 8 you have this simply x minus 8 similarly i will also need the length of this force this 10 kilonewtons force about the point of section that's from point d i will also need this length from point d to the point of section to the point of section okay so what's now the length of um, this force to the point of section simply take away every other distances behind so the length remains constant it becomes x minus total distance behind which is 1 plus 2 plus 2 5 becomes x minus 5 and also from point e i have also a force at point e 2.5 kilometers force at point e i will also need to find distance of this force about the point of section I will need to get distance of this force from point E to the point of section. So similarly, you take away all the distances behind and consider only from point E. So take off this distance behind from X. And distance behind is simply 2 plus 2 plus 1, 5 plus 3, 8. So it means distance of this force from E to the point of section remains X minus 8. So you have this. So moment about EF now. Is now equal to first the moment of the ROAY force 24.5 about the point of section is constant distance from point A to the point of section remains X so that moment is simply 24.5 times X which is 24.5 X next next is for us to convert the UDL to a point load we know the UDL length now as X minus 8 so converting it to a point that becomes minus 15 times x minus 8. This is the point load. So the moment is now simply place x minus 8 at the middle, x minus 8 all over 2, 
Time total distance from point C down to point E or point F, sorry. Time total distance plus total distance from point C down to point F, which is now 1 plus 3, 4 plus 2, 6. So simply add plus 6 to it. Next is the 10 kN force. Distance of this force about point, the point of section is simply x minus 5. So we simply have minus 10 times x minus 5. Finally, we have the 2.5 kN force acting downward at point E. Total distance it takes this force to get to the point of section is x minus 8. So we have minus 2.5 times x minus 8. But not forgetting, this is now the summation of the entire moment on the beam. And we know that at the end, we know that at the end of every bending moment analysis, we must always obtain what? Zero as the answer. So, and that is simply the summation of the entire moment of the beam at the end of the beam. So we sum the entire moment on the beam, not forgetting we have a 20 kN force, sorry, we have a 20 kN moment at point D. Don't neglect this. Due to the hinge on the beam, we had this 20 kN moment. So all we need to do is simply what? Add this 20 into this equation plus 20. That becomes the entire moment on the beam. Let's do this and see if we are going to obtain zero. Yes? The what? Moment of the force about a point is what? There is no distance between that force and point F. It means that distance is zero. So the moment of that force becomes zero. Okay, so at F, X is now equal to total length from point A to point F, which is simply what? 10. So this moment becomes moment at F. And that's equal to, so wherever I see F put in the value as 10, wherever I see X put in the value as 10, it becomes 24. 0.5 times 10 minus 15 into 10 minus 8 into 10 minus 8 all over 2 plus 6 minus 10 into 10 minus 5 minus 2.5 into 10 minus 8 plus 20. My God. Okay. So please keep um, share force C for me and also keep, okay, keep share force C for me. Let me wipe the side off. So moment at F is now equal to 24.5 times 10 is 245 minus, okay, so I have here 10 minus 8 is 2, 2 times 15 will give us 30 into, I have here, 10 minus 8 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1, so I have 1 plus 6, which is 7. 10 minus 8 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1, 1 plus 6 gives me 7, so it becomes 30 times 7. I have here minus 10 into, of course, 10 minus 5 is 5, 10 into 5. I have here minus 2.5 into 10 minus 8 is 2. So we we'll have minus 2.5 into 2 plus 20. So this is equal to 245 minus 30 times 7 is what? 210. 210 minus 10 times 5 is 50. Minus 2.5 times 2 gives us 5 plus 20. Moment at F is equal to, this is 245 minus 210 minus 50 is minus 260 minus 20 is minus minus 210, sorry, minus 210 minus 50 is minus 260 minus 5 is minus 265 plus 20 simply gives us minus 
four five and two four five minus two point five is simply equal to what at the end of every bending moment analysis you must always obtain zero as the answer so you have this you have that well that is that for the analysis so for those of you that they gave this in your test i hope you are able to arrive zero <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> there is a possibility you might see it in your exam last year it didn't come out but year before last engineer Leo set it why would nobody answer this question what was hard there yes it's, it's not hard but long it's not like it's there no no how 24.5 times 10 24.5 times 10 is 245 and okay you see the same thing now if you go that way around 245 plus 20 is 265 you see the same thing what i did was minus 210 minus 50 minus 5 plus 60 plus 20. you see the same thing if you go that way around you're still correct the most important thing is to get zero <laughs> just have a touch of zero somewhere <laughs> that's the most it's not hard even the long is not it's just because i'm teaching you guys that's why it looks like it, it's not it's not long this is normally a question i can do okay no this one can take me up to 10 minutes no denials no denials this one can take me up to 10 minutes there's no need to deny about this <laughs> you want to jump and pass it <laughs> So, but the only strange thing there is that couple at the end all you need to do is simply add that plus 20 that's the entire moment on the beam add the 20 to the equation and you're going to obtain zero so the next thing is to plot the diagram next is to plot the diagram so where do i do this now the whole board is jammed the whole board is jammed okay so i think i can wipe here since i obtain moment at f here I can wipe here. You are still writing? Yes? Yes, it's possible to, of course, why not? It's possible to have UVL. So far, you have a UVL on the beam, you continue taking sections to the end of the beam if you're doing moments. Yes. <laughs> you have to continue taking moments. Eh? Let me pause this video first. I'm hearing you, please. Continue this video. Okay. Next is to plot the diagram. Let's plot the diagram. I think I can wipe here. I can wipe here. Uh, okay. Let's get back to the original beam. Okay. Let's get back the original beam. We we'll have UDL here. This B, this is C. Point D, we have ten kilo newtons. We we'll have a couple. Point E, we have two point five. We we'll also have four point five. Point F we have uh, is E is point F. Point F we simply have uh, what's the value of F? Arrow is what's the value of arrow A please? What? Twin, F is 18 kilonewtons. 24.5 kilonewtons. Okay, you get the distance apart from A to B is 2 meters, from B to C is also 2 meters, from C to D is 1 meters, from D to E is 3 meters, from E to F is 2 meters. The UDL load remains 15 kilonewtons per meter. So we need to plot the diagrams now. We trace out all the points 
this out point A, of course, you can do this with a graph sheet to get an accurate um, diagram, but we are using freehand sketch, which is also permitted. Trace out point C, trace out point D, trace out point E, and finally point F. So we assess the shear force values now. You pick the shear force values from highest to the lowest. I think we got shear force at A to be 24.5. We also got shear force at B to be 24.5. Please give me shear force at C. What is shear force at C? Minus 5.5. Shear force at D also gave us minus 15. And at E gave us minus 18. So we only have one positive value of shear force. And that is simply what 24.5. So shear force at A and B gave us 24.5. That's the only positive value we have for shear force. So we indicate that every other value. Now after the positive value, the next is to plot the origin line or the zero mark. So this is the origin line. Okay, so all the values above the origin line are positive, while values below the origin line are negative. So we'll start putting in the negative shear force now from the lowest value to the highest. The lowest is minus 5.5, right? Yes, so we indicate here this is minus 5.5 followed by minus 15.5 followed by minus 15.5 we also indicate minus 15.5 and finally followed by minus 18 minus 18 Okay, kilonewtons. So these are the values of the shear forces. You trace them out. Trace them out. You trace them out. You trace them out. You have this. So let's start now. Shear force at A gives us 24.5 kilonewtons. This is line A. This is 24.5 kilonewtons. You simply asterisk where they meet. Shear force at B also gave us 24.5. This is line B. This is also 24.5. Asterisk where they meet. Shear force at C gave us what? Minus 5.5 kilonewtons. This is line C. This is minus 5.5. This is where they meet. You asterisk. Shear force at D gave us minus 15.5, right? Yes, D prime prime. Minus 15.5. So please take note. All we are using is the final values of the shear force, which exists at all the prime primes. So we are using shear force D prime prime, which is minus 15.5. This is line D. This is line D, and this is 15.5. This is where the emits. You simply asterisk. Shear force at E gave us, which is E prime prime, gave us minus 18 kilonewtons. Okay, so um, this is line E. This is minus 18 kilonewtons. You simply asterisk where they meet. Finally, shear force at F is zero. We obtain shear force at F to be zero. This is F, this is line zero. You simply asterisk there. Now, from the origin, at point A, we have a vertical force, which is a point we're pointing upwards. So you connect from the origin down to that force, which is 24.5. This force moves from point A, this force moves from point A down to point B and encountered any problem? Okay. <clears throat> this force moves from point A down to point B now encountered a UDL between B to C. So you, and the shear force diagram for a UDL is simply what? A slant line. We we'll simply use a slant line and connect these points. This is not slant enough. You use a slant line to connect these points. Shear force diagram for a um, UDL is simply a slant line. Okay. This force moves from point C down to point D. Now encountered a downward force of 10 kilonewtons. So the shear force diagram for a point load is simply a straight line that connects the points. This same force moves from point D down to point E. Also, now encountered also a downward force at E of 2.5 kilonewtons. 
Schaeffer's diagram for a point load is simply a straight line connecting the point. So we have this. This same force moves from point E down to point F. But on getting to point F, it now encounters an upward force of 18 kN um, to point F. So we simply connect with an upward force. You have this. So this is the shear force diagram. It becomes the shear force diagram for the given beam. Next is to draw the bending moment diagram. We we'll also assess the bending moment values. We we'll assess the bending moment values from the lowest, from the high, from the highest to the lowest. Bending moment values from the highest to the lowest. Moment at A is automatic zero. Moment at B gave us 49.49 kilonewtons. Moment at C gave us 68. Highest so far. Moment at D gave us 62.5. 68 is still the highest. Moment at E gave us 16. And moment at F is zero. So the highest is 68. Highest is 68, and all the moments are positive values. There is no negative value of moment here. All the moments are positive values. So we have 68 highest, followed by 62.5, followed by 49. So let's get it down. Okay, this is 68 kilonewton meter, followed by 62.5 kilonewtons meter, followed by 40 what now? 49, right? 49 followed by 49 kilonewtons meter followed by 16 16 kilonewtons meter and the final one is zero so keep this side this is zero mark and there is no negative value of moment so trace out all the points trace out all the points trace out all the points Trace out all the points. Moment at A is zero. This is line A. This is zero mark. You asterisk. Moment at B is 49, right? Moment at B is 49. Yes, moment at B is 49 kilonewtons meter. This is line B. This is 49. You simply asterisk where they meet. Moment at C is 68. Moment at C is 68 kilonewtons meter. So this is line C. This is 68. You asterisk where they meet. Yes. Moment at D is 62.5. This is line D. This is 62.5. So you asterisk where they meet. You have this. Moment at E is 16. Here. Yeah. Moment at E is 16. This is 16. This is line E from here. So you asterisk where they meet. Finally, moment at F is 0. So this is, this, um, this is line F and this is 0 mark. You simply asterisk where they meet. The moment diagram for a point load between A and B, of course, is a point load. Moment diagram for a point load is simply a slant line. So you slant the line, connect the points. But between B and C is a UDL. The moment diagram for a UDL is simply a curve. So you have a curve connecting point B to point C. Between C to D, of course, you use a point load. Um, you use a slant line to connect. Also from D down is a slant, a point load, a point load, and you're good to go. This is the bending moment diagram. Okay, so this is the Schaffer's diagram, and this is the bending moment diagram for this beam. Okay. So question might want to, uh, might arise. They might say, find the point of maximum bending moment. And I've always said that the point of maximum bending moment is the point where shear force changes sign from positive to what? Negative. And if you check, the point where shear force changes sign from positive to negative is where? 
between B, this is plus, and this is negative. So between B and C, shear force changes sign from positive to negative. And if you check the bending moment diagram, it is maximum at that point. If you trace this point down, it's maximum. So all you need to do is the equation governing B to C, shear force BC, equate that equation to zero, find the value of X. That gives you the point of maximum bending moment. Let's do it now and see. Let's do it and see. Okay. So, point of maximum bending moment. Point of maximum bending moment. At the point of maximum bending moment, shear force equation along BC is equal to zero. The point of maximum bending moment is that point where shear force changes time from positive to negative, and that's between B to C. So, given the shear force equation along BC, shear force BC is simply equal to, give me the equation, 24.5 minus 15 into x minus 2, right? 15x, shear force BCO is x minus 2, brother. Should be x minus 2. It's x minus 2 between b to c. You're taking away 2 from it. <coughs> so, this is the shear force equation along bc. For point of maximum bending moment, we equate this simply to 0. Therefore, you have 24.5 minus 15 into x minus 2 is equal to 0. Less than minus 15, I would prefer you not to expand this bracket here. Simply send minus 15 over to this side of the equation. Negative sign cross and equal sign becomes positive. You simply have 24.5 to be equal to 15 into x minus 2. Also, hold on at this point. Don't expand yet. Divide both sides by 15 so that x minus 2 will be left alone. You simply have 24.5 all over 15 and that's equal to x minus 2. So, give me 24.5 divided by 15. Uh, 1.6 and that's equal to x minus 2 to make x subject simply send minus 2 over here you simply have 1.6 plus 2 negative sign cross equal to sign becomes positive and this is equal to x this becomes or this implies that x is equal to 1.6 plus 2 is 3.6 meters so which means at the point of maximum bending moment x is equal to 3.6 meters and if you measure, 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 this is 2. This is 2. That means um, 3.6. That means from here to this point is somewhat 1.6. Is that also? Yes, that's the middle. 